Afternoon, folks. Welcome back. It's John Petty Bar doing a follow-up recording at 10 minutes past 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's still Thursday, the 26th day of May, and I had a very sincere question from viewer on my video, which I stated, only $2 gas will be fondly remembered. Only $2 a liter gas will be fondly remembered. And very sincere questions. I started a text message. This is taking too long. I'm going to do a video. It's very simple, folks. It's supply and demand. The world is growing. All oil wells have a natural rate of decline. On land wells, fracked wells, offshore wells. Uh, only wells that don't decline actually is the magnificent tar sand, uh, oil sands in Alberta, where they take the, the, the oil sands and they extract bitumen. They get more and more efficient. But all conventional oil wells, be they on land, fracked, offshore, deep shore water wells, all wells have a natural rate of decline. The oil industry must run very hard to keep up with demand. That was said by Lee Raymond, that used to be the president of ExxonMobil about 20, 25 years ago. Lee Raymond, very bright guy. And now at the time the world was using 80 million barrels of oil a day. Now the world is using a little over 100 million barrels of oil per day. And the world is growing. You can't just look at air area. You've got to look at the big picture. Indonesia, Egypt, Nigeria, um, Kenya, Tanzania, uh, South America, uh, China's population is declining because of the, the sin of abortion and one child per family policy. India is growing. Uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, all these countries are growing. And many of them are developing world countries, and they want to get ahead. They want to have electricity. They want to have a refrigerator to keep their food cold from spoiling. Big thing, keep their food cold from spoiling. Many of these countries are very warm climates. And they want to have moped or scooter bike, some sort of mobile transportation and get them from point A to point B, motorized transportation. So all these people all over the world want to get a little piece of the pie, and we're not going to stop them from doing that. Okay, they all want to get a little piece of the pie. The world is growing, and rightly so. The world is growing by over one million precious new babies being born every week. So actually about a million one hundred thousand approximately, and that, that accelerates, which is wonderful. So you're looking at about sixty million more people a year. We'll do that for ten years to six hundred million people, do that for thirty years, thirty ten years flies by just like that. Thirty years flies by by pretty quickly too. You're looking at it one and three quarters to two billion more people. So as simple as that. It's supply and demand, and for the first time since the nineteen twenties, this year, twenty twenty two, which went five more days. We'll finish the fifth month of the year, five months of 2022 already gone, and there'll be only seven more months left in this year. So, for the first time in history, the world is producing less oil to it's consumed, supply and demand. If people stopped eating lobsters, lobster prices would go down. But people like to eat lobsters, the economy has been good up till now, and people have been eating lobsters and crab and what have you, and... Uh, the price of lobsters is very strong because the catches are good. The price of lobsters is not down because the catches are bad. Catches are excellent, and the price is excellent. You don't get that too much. But that's happened there. It's very fortunate for these people that fish. Use it as one example. So anyhow, the you got curly-headed pot pushing Ottawa, Justin Trudeau. You got terrible timidity in Halifax. You got Ecology Exit Center. You got Gretchen uh, Fitzgerald. Uh, Council of Canadians, Sierra Club, uh, the guy that loves to eat lobsters and fly around his private planes to between his three big multi-million dollar mansions. Yes, that guy. He's known as uh, David Suzuki. You've got Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. All these people hate the oil industry. So people aren't building new, companies aren't building new jack-up oil rigs. Companies aren't building new sets of fracking equipment. Companies aren't ordering new $35, $40 million uh, directional drilling, horizontal drilling oil rigs. There's only so much supply, 
and the industry went from severe downturn and was aggravated by the biological germ warfare of the communist China known as the coronavirus. And as a result, we have a world this year where more oil is being used and produced. Now, a recession may come, a terrorist attack may come, and I'll be proven wrong in the short term that the price of barrel oil goes. The price, oil, gasoline is about $2 a gallon, excuse me, not a gallon, excuse me, $2 a liter. Correct it. Two dollars a liter, and oil right now today is actually up by three something. It's about one hundred and fourteen dollars. But a hundred, hundred and ten dollar barrel of oil is yielding two dollar a liter gasoline. So oil goes to one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty. You will have closer to three dollars, and it's not a popular thing. It's hurting like hell. People are heating with oil. Contractors that are in the forest, guys in the trucking business. Uh, people driving back and forth to work. It hurts like hell. But it all goes back when Sleepy Joe and Blowjob Bill's been my wife, Crooked Slam Nina Hillary, and Justin Trudeau, and Timothy, Terrible Timothy, Terrible Timothy, and all these environmentalists have to say, we must, we need more oil. That, or we start living in caves. Alternative, and I could be wrong. If everybody starts living in caves and doesn't have cell phone and a TV and computer and electric lights and heat and so on, appliances, well, the demand for oil will go down. If everybody starts walking, the demand for oil will go down. And you stop flying out west to see your grandkids, the demand for oil will go down. If you sell your big trucks and SUVs, the demand for gold oil will go down. And if houses that have three or four cars in the yard and they get rid of half their cars, the demand for oil will go down. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So that is the, it's a wonderful, a wonderful question, very sincere question from one of my most loyal viewers. And I decided to do a video on that. And with that, now it's about, I'm almost uh, seven minutes in video, so I better wrap this up. It's John Pettipot as a follow up to my video on why I say $2 a liter of gas will be fondly remembered later this year. With that, I got, we need a drill. We need a drill, baby drill. And oil, believe me, will be around for a long, long time. I stand by my statement. Oil will be around for a long, long time. You know, most people all want to live in caves or walk everywhere and not fly places and enjoy the convenience of modern life. Plus, there's all these, these and aggregate, Tens of millions and hundreds of millions of people coming up in the developing world, and they want a piece of a pie. The pie. It's like George Jefferson moving on up, uh, sitcom back in the 70s, early 80s. We finally got a piece of the pie. Well, they want a piece of the pie too, and we're not going to stop them. They, they have every right to have a piece of the pie, and they will have. There's things like hydrogen come in. That's an important one, but it's not here yet. Not here yet. I don't imagine anybody's filled up on hydrogen lately. Okay, and windmill. Kind of a funny looking car to go under the wires if you have a windmill on your on your car or solar panel on your back of your pickup truck or lawnmower or something like that. With that, I gotta go. Thank you very much. All the best. To promote a discussion and thank you for your questions and I appreciate them. Bye for now.